Tom Viz, this is Flynn. Um, I actually sing one of my buddies songs to get on the screen earlier. Um, let's see. Well, it's operations and techniques. I'm real nervous. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a computer nerd, so keep that in mind when I'm going here. Um, let's get to it. Welcome to the internet. We're going to be your guides here. The guy that was talking last was obviously an attorney, not a tech person. You can tell because he was saying that you can't hide on the internet. And I'm going to tell you that you can't. Um, you want to say anything about Spike yourself? Um, not really. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the beginning, I'm biased that enough, a little yeah. more than I was actually wanting to put forward. Okay. Um, so, in the beginning, uh, you had Fight Club. Basically, we don't talk about Fight Club. We're going to skip past the early beginnings. This isn't a history of anonymous. This is more of a progression of tactics and techniques. Um, so, first rule of Fight Club, we're going to talk about that. Uh, 2006, 2007, you saw the Habo raids. Um, Habo was uh, basic like video game. You can go on, log in, and have fun. Habo's moderators were uh, racially profiling dark skinned avatars, so we went ahead and closed the pool. We had a lot of people um, went ahead and made characters black man, big afro, black suit. Nice human being that says the pool is closed. That's where it comes from. We closed the pool. Um, and you really saw the beginning of Anonymous at that point actually start working together, you can see by the graphic there, I mean, we had directions, kind of what you were supposed to do, and it's the very beginning of basically organizing an op, and this was one of the very first actual ops that was ran, um, was the Halloween. Um, 2006, 2007, we had uh, Hal Turner, who was a white supremacist, white nationalist, Holocaust buyer, blogger from New Jersey, he's an idiot, um, and he basically pissed everybody off. Um, so we went ahead, he lost his website, cops were punished by the family traffic, and he eventually uh, sued a bunch of people in Moss. But uh, that's kind of like the beginning of sitting DDoS used as, as an effective tool to go ahead and shut stuff down. Um, Chris Forkander rescued the pedophiles, the beginning of your social engineering. Um, so we had a couple people that were actually social engineering the student posing as like 13 year old girls, 15 year old girls. Those chat logs were sent uh, to his church, uh, to the authorities, he ended up getting arrested. Um, and yeah, it's pretty sick, dude. Uh, 2008 was kind of when we hit the meat space. Uh, Project Genology was when uh, you really saw anonymous for the first time as a group out in public, masks, whatnot. We were here. Um, down there in LA, they had huge protests in Los Angeles uh, outside the Church of Scientology. And that was really about uh, them trying to remove some of the videos of Tom Cruise from the video of him talking about Scientology and Sanu and all that creepy shit. Um, you saw also saw you know, DDoS's, black bags, uh, prank calls, um, a couple other different measures that were used against Scientology at that point. Can you uh, just elaborate on what a black fax is? All uh, right. Um, so you basically get a piece of black, like construction paper, and you tape it end-to-end -end inside the fax machine, and you just hit go. And it continually loops that black piece of paper through the fax machine so that the receiving end actually just gets nothing but their ink wasted. And then the black fax is coming in. Right so, and if you guys do have questions about anything like that, um, but, I mean, if, if you're going to do, do it right, have some fun with it, then uh, that's definitely going to cost a little bit of money. Um, at least in printer, you can you know, all know printer cartridges run about 150 bucks depending on the printer. Um, so, costs a, little bit of, costs a little bit of money. Um, but, like, again, again, this is like kind of the first time that we actually went out in the public space, but not for an actual protest. Uh, the age of hacktivism, 2009, uh, Project Skynet, uh, which was all about active after counterfeiting in a trade agreement, uh, basically increased the chances of computer cell phones would not get taken away, um, created a culture of surveillance and suspicion, kind of made people a little wary, uh, and then poor size speed to uh, monitor users. Let's see, 2010 we had uh, Op Payback, and there's about 13,000 people uh, on the IRC channel for Op Payback. That's a lot of people. And that's yes. kind of where I got my start. I was just talking to a few friends, and they said, oh, join this IRC channel. And I said, why? It's just another IRC channel. And they said, well, there's over 10,000 people here. They kind of got my attention. Why is there 10,000 people trying to talk at once on IRC? It gets kind of hard, but then I noticed it had more of a political standing than just 
to everyone trying to get on there and do stupid stuff. And then there was people that were indicted uh, and eventually convicted for DDoSing attacks um, against the RIA, MPA. Can I ask you, can I just insert one thing? Because I was having this conversation last time. So, and I noticed this is, you're mentioning the uh, recording industry of the Motion Picture Association of America. Uh, if you get to it, can you discuss why hackers or why anonymous hate so much? Specifically, like not, you know, another record company or not another tow company, but it seems like Sony is special, has a special place. Uh, the kind of pushbacks. If you look at, at, at some of the things that they've done when it comes to, um, like sharing, file sharing, and things like that, they've actually you know, sued people and not for pirating movies. I mean, I get it, it's costing people money, um, but really, like, it's costing people with millions of dollars a couple bucks for us downloading a movie or whatnot. And they're getting pissed off about it trying to, you know, sue people $50,000 for downloading movies or $100,000 for downloading a movie. And at that point, like, you know, really, you're going to sue somebody for that much money just for downloading a movie. So, so Sony's, Sony's perceived as being more aggressive yeah. than anti piracy yeah. measures and other things. Yeah. Um, and you can see by the graphic, I mean, Target list, you know, the mission, you're really at this point getting into I mean, more fluid ops. Things are a lot more organized at this point. Um, we have our tactics down. Um, everything from, you know, writing press releases and making videos to just organizing people, which is like hurting your cats. If you've ever tried to do that, it's not fun. And trying to organize moms is, it's like trying to chase like 10 children with Asperger. Something like trying to get them to settle down for just a minute and listen. Usually they don't. Um, continuation of uh, PayPal is off PayPal. This is where you see the PayPal 14 coming, um, who were tried, convicted, and whatnot. Uh, I think they actually pled guilty and whatnot. Then you saw black faxes again, uh, flooding call centers with phone calls, um, even snail mail at that point. We were mailing things to PayPal. Um, and this was all over WikiLeaks. And, the decision to stop uh, processing credit card or processing credit cards um, for support of the switch to each their own. What was the, uh, the snail mail? What was the goal uh, in plan of using the snail mail? Just the amount of processing time that you can detect you opening it? Does that yeah. ever mail somebody like 10 pounds of horse shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we, okay, you got it. <laughs> like, I'm not playing, like, that is not an horseshit, I might open that box. Uh, oh, so that, and you mean you're being serious? Yeah, I wasn't, I don't know, it's like, you know, you're like, you're right, of course, you get out, you scoop it up, you put it in the box, and you send it off. But like, there's, there's, it's fucked up in the head, but you know, like, it's funny, like, someone had to deal with that. It's retribution. Um, it's basically just being a joke in the ass. Um, 2009, 2010, 2011, we covered Arab Spring. This is when you saw things were really good organized. Uh, we were working with uh, various groups at this point, um, Freedom Ops or Freedom Ops or Nuts. Um, we lost a lot of good people, um, especially in Egypt with the team that I work with. There's two surviving members of the 13 that we were working with. Wow. So, so um, can you just, <coughs> just expand on that with exactly? Can you share a little bit about how, what you experienced with that? Yeah. Um, without giving too much away, um, part of what I did for some of it was uh, making care packages. Uh, at one point during one of these, uh, we were teaching certain people how to switch their cell phone uh, SIM cards to be able to access the different countries, um, cell towers, be able to stay on the internet. Um, with that, there's also things like MeshNet that you can install on your phone so that one person, you know, has access to the internet from that other country and then someone within range of them also has internet, someone within range of them also has internet. So there's a lot of things that were done. Uh, there's also medical information, you know, white phosphorus, how to treat those burns, um, along with the different hacks and DOSing and drop the fools off the internet. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of shit that went on, even organizational, like, ground ops, just see running secure communications for different activists within these countries to where you can't be trapped. And they could try, good luck. Um, which, like I said, good luck, you can't hide on the internet. And another thing during this time, uh, tour relays, the increase in tour relays and bridges, 
increased tremendously, and the amount of Tor usage was some of the highest we've ever seen. Um, and that goes to show that that software really is needed in these cases whenever the countries are trying to silence their people or just keep them from putting their message out. I worked on a documentary for um, a journalist out in France uh, with a small team. Um, and that went back into when we invaded Libya. Um, and the software that was found that the French had gone in uh, in their initial airstrikes and blown up the collection centers for a program called Eagle. Um, and there was a couple other programs as well. Uh, two cabinet members of Sarkozy's cabinet when they were, ended up getting indicted um, for selling them that, that software. So sometimes we do do good things. And that allowed them to track activists. Um, they were part of the documentary, which is still on the internet. Sony tried to sue him to get the 
software taken offline, completely erased. So that kind of led to trying to censor him. So they got hacked several times. Maybe for count the day. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, coming here like caused a giant blow up and I spent two weeks under attack by anonymous um, fruit and showing up. So they were afraid I was going to spill all the secrets. So Sam was arrest uh, June 7, 2011. He was doxxed by Vicious uh, and spent over the FNET IRC channel pound chat. Um, March 2012 was all of those sites arrest. So it was kind of that area in between where he was actually the federal inform and whatnot. Um, and Decat was actually one of the informants that helped uh, take Sather down. So that was, uh, of course, you know, Hector is going to be here later. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, are you saying, so in other words, his arrest was because somebody hoxed him? Oh, uh, well, I mean, that idea. Pardon me? That idea, yeah. 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 I think the FBI, whoever who was profiling him before, had an idea because he was carting as well and he was having a ship to his house. He had priors for hacking. I don't think it was just this, okay. but it kind of added to it. Yeah. When people are sending tips to FBI.gov about this dude, with his all his information and shit like that. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's arrest. Um, there was already suspicion of federal involvement because of his actions, the things he was saying the last couple months of. Uh, before the rest of the little set got arrested, or those couple people got arrested, that's right there in the middle, that's his little funny dance to me. Um, there was already suspicion of him being uh, an informant of, or of being flipped just by his actions, things he was saying, things he was doing, that just kind of can really tell if you look at IRC logs and also like Twitter logs, but not of that time. The last three months, like he really was pushing hard on a lot of people. Um, and I made people suspicious. Unfortunately, he has a lot of fan boys at that point uh, because he was savage when he was a mouthpiece. Um, and it was impossible to criticize him. They, people would just step up to his defense. Um, but once everything went down, that's when damage control could kind of begin. Um, it was demoralizing, it did hurt. It was definitely you know, a punch to the mouth um, that you can't ignore. Um, but at the same point, as you'll see later on, overall grand scheme of things really didn't mean that much. Uh, 2012, the ops continued. I uh, remember the arrests were early 2000, 2012, when not the rest of those things. I think that was the picture right up there. But, yeah. uh, he still had Operation Mega Upload and support of chem.com. He had the anti site leaks um, and the CIA attacks, uh, the semantic source code leak, um, operating in the Formula One hacks. By the way, guys, what the fuck are we doing in Bahrain? Like, for real? I understand the Fifth Fleet's there and shit, but that's like one of the most fucked up countries anybody could ever want to even like try to support. Stop. Just stop. And that is not a free country at all. And I understand it's an important naval base, but not, but seriously check that government. Uh, you also had the Chindula Migra, the Arizona DBS, or DBS hacks um, during this time. And as you can see, the ops ran out, and time man of the year, there's a lot of shit going on still uh, with Occupy Wall Street, with Arab Spring, uh, whatnot, at this time as well. Um, 2013, uh, Operate Roll. Red or roll red and roll, and shit. Uh, which is a stupid bill of rating case, which is why I'm actually here um, was because KY Anonymous was like, I'll do it. And I was like, fuck that guy. No. Eric, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, he saw Operation Angel with Aaron Schwartz, um, for Pop Last Resort, which was retaliation. This was the game changer. The NSA document drops. That's when I'm stopped. Sadly, it had nothing to do with the destruction of Anonymous, it was the NSA doc, the doc drops. At that point, people went dark. People stopped. And that was because we didn't know. We didn't know how deep that went, what their capabilities were. We kind of guessed at that point. We had our ideas of how to stay safe. But everybody stopped at that point because, you know what, if shit's coming out, we need to figure out what's going on first before we continue. 2014, the 
social justice warrior anonymous, which is kind of the uh, version you see of it today. This is my response to it. Why the fuck do you guys just not turn your computer off? Um, you see things like Op Ferguson, uh, Operation Sea World, where they're trying to save the whales, uh, Operation KKK, which was completely faked, uh, Op Beast, which is about bestiality, and Op Stop Suicide. As you can see, the ops have completely changed from what they were. They're no longer really anti government other than Op Ferguson. It's more of a social justice thing, um, which there's a need for. Um, there's definitely a need within the United States to check law enforcement uh, when it comes to the treatment of people of color. Um, and I mean, I don't, know, I don't want to get into that too much, but uh, yeah, um, Op Ferguson, uh, I mean, for as much as it did good, shone a spotlight, I think they picked the wrong era. And that's my own personal opinion, but whatever. But that's typical, right? For time. Yeah, yeah it's just a reward on the time. I'm well, that and Commander Commander can't see Panel X. Uh, Christopher Dorian uh, is uh, hiding up in Alaska right now, or Canada, or some shit. But uh, that dude's like, we'll get into him. We'll get into him. Uh, 2015, we see Op Charlie Hebdo, Op Ice Isis, Operation Death Eaters. So as you can see, we moved on to Harry Potter Ops. <laughs> um, so I'll stop up with our reclamation. Um, it's really turned into um, it's really turned into nothing but young kids and a couple older crazy cats that are mad anarchists that uh, run things. And I mean that's that's pretty much where it's at now. White potato. I'm sorry. White potato. Yeah. Have you ever tried to talk to him? Deeply on him. What? Have you ever tried to talk to a potato? Okay, come hang out uh, there sometime. When I was really high once, I read. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be to deal with some of these people. Okay. Um, it's... Huh. Why a potato? You want to answer that one? Yeah. Like they're coming on the op uh, Operation Ice Isis. Uh, basically, they'll take any website that they think has any jihadist activity at all and DDoS it. But they don't really understand that intelligence agencies run honeypots and they're messing up actual real operations of intelligence. Um, and it kind of pisses a lot of those people off. And I think they should leave that to more expert people instead of just trying to aimlessly get Twitter accounts suspended also as another thing they do. Yeah. And a lot of those are run by PsyOps people. And it just kind of messes with real operations instead of just aimlessly poking anything that had us an ISIS tag on. So you feel like some of the projects these days are just less, they're done by less smart, less experienced, less well-read people? For the most part, yes, there are still some people in Anonymous that are still active today that know their shit. Um, they might find them. Um, they're still there. Um, but the power structure, I guess, that isn't supposed to be there, that it's there, that it's not supposed to be there. Um, it just kind of goes along with it, and I'm not really sure why at this point. Um, and like you said with the Vice ISIS, like, not only are you screwing up uh, counterintelligence, um, trying to stop these idiots, um, but I mean, they're even doing things like, it's, oh, it's just a Muslim website, we're still going to DDoS it. Like, there's things that they're doing, like, you're like, pretty guys, come on, stop. Like, just stop. Um, op death eaters is like nothing but tweet storms, um, and that's all about. I don't know at this point, considering a conspiracy theory, um, to where they're trying to catch all these elite rich pedophile guys. I don't know if that's actually what's going on, but they basically read conspiracy sites, read the newspaper, you know what I mean, and. and just tweet stuff about that. And the difference between like Operation Death Eaters and the Operation Darknet, the child porn thing, we actually identified child porn websites, identified the people on them, and had their passwords and everything and sent them to the FBI. Okay. So we wow. had full profiles of these people before we sent it on. These people were just going by rumors and hearsay and tweeting about it. And at one point I actually did ID, and it was a list of 72 people I need 72 out of like 120, and then we sent that to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And three weeks later, I think ICE and coordinated, or ICE and coordinated uh, worldwide arrests of about 220 people. 
Um, the symbol's important, especially when it gives people hope. And that was one of the big things that did come out of Arab Spring was we gave a lot of people hope. Um, that there were people that were seeing what was going on, that were acting on what was going on, that were supporting what was going on, um, to where you knew that you weren't alone. And that idea a little bit. Um, you know, anonymous may be on a break, whatnot. They may not come back, they may come back, you never really know. Um, and it's really just something like Arab Spring to unify you know, everybody to make it to where we feel like we're making change in a positive manner, other than saving the wheels. Um, so, anonymous operations um, basically, this is the breakdown of how things kind of go on. Um, an action disliked by a group or a group, or by a person or a group, um, agrees to take part in the idea of anonymous. Um, they identify and organize materials to understand the situation, which is lacking at this point um, today. Um, we identify those involved, um, plan an attack, plan press releases and videos, um, execute the plan. Sometimes that's before, sometimes that's after. Kind of just depends on what you're feeling. Um, monitor the reactions and outcome on social media, whatnot, um, and then adjust, wash, runs, repeat, do it again. Um, and you can continuously hit targets like we did um, throughout Arab Spring to you know really make a difference. And it's just a small, slight adjustment, small adjustment, you know, left or right. Try it again. You know, try it again. Uh, press releases, so this is like just the basics here. Uh, press releases, videos and pace, uh, you can know, hack some data <laughs> Awesome. Uh, uh, you can get us, black bags, make phone calls. Um, organizing info, organizing knots is really important. The hardest part is probably organizing those fast and kids to focus for a minute. Uh, and then how to amplify, how to, how to get your message out, how to spread that. Um, through tweet storms, through multiple accounts pushing ops, um, and then you know, for the starters, you know, you have off new blood. That's basically like pace spins of you know, basic anonymity, basic how to do this, basic how to do that, how to write a press release, how to make a video. Like it's just like the real basics of what what you can do to help start taking part. The problem is, is some kids will go through about new blood or do a couple things, and all of a sudden they think they're a great hacker, they end up in jail. Um, and that sucks, but it happens. How, how long is the training? There's no release training. It's what you want to put into it, what you want to do. There's no like schedule or classes unless you want to pay for one of Derek Bullsider's copy and paste it. Social engineering or a copy and paste of Wikipedia article that this kid itself um, as anonymous training. Um, so there's there's really no schedule. It's really just kind of what you can do as an individual. Um, software wise, things like Gigaloader, or JMeter, um, LOIC, and HOIC for DDoS. Uh, you're also sitting now leaders from like the Xbox kids that are get used instead of uh, the LOIC or HOIC. Yeah, back in like early 2010, people actually did hacking to get a botnet. Now you go and pay for a booter, you actually sign up for sometimes with their personal email address and credit card. Yeah, for why they get caught. Um, and you see that today um, quite a bit to where you're not seeing the, the old school botnets that used to be ran. Instead, now it's more people go and beg for Bitcoin on Twitter. And someone gives you enough Bitcoin, you can go purchase an hour of DDoS and play site. Um, Slurs, Russell Nuker, um, of each SQL map, a lot of the backtrack and Cali toolkits. Um, I personally enjoy Cali, I also enjoy Arc Linux. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's things that you can build, do, whatnot. Um, and also, a lot of tools out there which uh, the loss in our stuff should actually affect quite a bit with the zero day regulation. Uh, whole other topic. Um, but I mean, basically, your tools are things that you can download for free. There, you don't see a lot of actual coding going into the tools today by Anonymous. Instead, it's more of what can I download for free or what's already available. Uh, and any software, uh, this is the very basics uh, EPN, Tor, ITP, uh, proxies, stealth proxies. Um, 
there are still ways to stay anonymous on the internet. There's still ways to stay hidden. Uh, there's some people you'll never find, and you'll never be able to attribute anything to them um, other than what they want you to know. And that's basically, I mean, good luck. There's, you know, we, there, last week I was talking about, oh, we can you know, figure out what your IP address is. Okay, cool, so you know what your IP address is for Starbucks. Good job. And that's five times over, you know. So, good luck. Communication software. IRC being one of the most important, uh, XMPP or chat, that message, retro share, you're sending a lot of stuff moving to the encrypted chat, so the crypto cat, uh, stuff like that, to where it's a little bit harder to track communications. Um, IRC is always going to be easy. I know at one point, uh, one of the IRC networks that I use said it had uh, portal access, admin access to, um, and I mean, he was on IRC. Um, and that was not the non ops IRC, that was a totally separate network or not. So, I mean, there's there's networks out there that you probably don't know about, and they're out there and you use them. Issues with Anonymous today. That's uh, Commander X. I think you guys are looking for him. He's catching these up. Like, seriously, all this dude does is get little kids in trouble. Like, so, memorize that face. He's probably, oh, this is a real guy? This is a real guy. This is a real guy. He's catching. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Um, so, issues with Anonymous. Uh, you know where he is? Uh, you know where he is? Uh, I know he's from Canada, supposedly, somewhere. Kind of down. Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> he, he always asks for Starbucks gift cards. Yeah, so, if I could fly, find him at the Starbucks. <laughs> but now it's important. Uh, no yeah. problem. Check the number. <laughs> <laughs>
to that point, but I mean, there are foreign powers that are out there that do hide behind the mask. So is there a place in the world where Anonymous is still well-organized, nimble, smart? Um, even with Habitage going down in South America, yeah. um, South America still got some really powerful dudes that are down there. Um, also, the Middle East still has some really good dudes out there, some really good dudes out in the Middle East still. Um, that are doing some really good things still um, to this day. Um, and also more of like the Mediterranean areas. You see a lot of stuff going on in Greece um, still, but a lot of it's not English at this point. Are the folks in Latin America, are they worried about the threat from drug cartels? Because I read a little bit about how Anonymous in, say, Mexico went after the drug cartel, which, you know, the public... We told yeah. Bear not to do that. <laughs> we told Bear not to go after the Zetas. Yeah. Um, Look, I, I, at first it seems like, yeah, you know what, go for these guys, fuck these guys, they're horrible people. But then we realized these are like next special forces that are going after them. So right, and that's, the, and that's the problem, is you get kids killed. And that's the last thing you want to see is people get killed. That was one of the reasons why I got involved was to stop people from getting killed. And I mean, that's a good goal to have, at least. <laughs> um, um, do, do you see any potential scenarios where anonymous uh, takes on the cybersecurity industry more head on as cybersecurity becomes bigger and bigger and more blurred lines between government and private sector happen? They can start to feel like, like just like they took on Stratfor, that other companies, some some large companies might be taking it in terms of turf in the internet and changing some of the the freedom that people felt was kind of the backbone of the internet and take on cybersecurity, or at least maybe even offer free tools that can undermine some of the products being offered by some sort of anti right? Yeah. So anti sec was kind of like the whole stop disclosing vulnerabilities against full disclosure, everything like that. That's kind of against the security community, how they are moving to sell products. I mean, that's a lot of what, what you see. They don't try to better the security. Like, my personal opinion is, uh, if you release proof of concept for your exploit, that's basically giving it for free to the black hat in Russia, who's making an exploit kit, who just reverse engineered the patch to put out. You got free O-Day, basically, because we know people aren't going to patch within those three days. At least some of them won't. And that's the least yeah. another. I know, like, there's corporations that have rules to where you can't even run out dates for three months. You know, so you got three months, six months, a year sometimes. Sometimes you find unpatched Windows 2003 servers <laughs> running R1. And, I mean, and they're, they're open to the internet. Um, bad idea. Um, but there's, it, it's not even, you know, some corporations are on top of it. You know, they have really good sec teams. Um, others aren't. And I mean, you're looking at three months, six months, just because they don't know how a patch is going to affect their current system. And if it's going to, you know, break their separate server or some shit, just because they patched it. And, and you see that quite a bit, to where people aren't patching. And even a timely manner, um, you know, three, six, and I mean, those, those laws just sit there and it's wide open. Um, this is Derek Lowstutter here. Um, you can't get skates from a cat, guys. I don't know if you knew that. But uh, <laughs> it's rare species, dogs get the mange, cats get their own version, humans get their own version. So here's Derek begging for money, as I was saying, because his cat gave the skates. And that's, that's an actual like, screenshot of the DM. Yeah, so, okay. um, and this turns people off to everything. Like when you see people that are using it to scam money to basically for their own agenda, it, it really turns people off to where they don't want to take part anymore because of shit like this. Um, more issues, it's not as legal as uh, people think it is. Uh, there are people who do decide what's important and uh, do take charge. Um, there is a couple small clicks that uh, are around still um, that try to be lost, and one of, them, one of those groups came after me just for coming some. Um, the meetings really become tainted, and you see that with the ops that are coming out. Um, they turned into a turned into divisive nonsense instead of the fight club style organizations. It started off as to where you have to report your hacks, you have to.
to sign everything, as you saw with Wormer earlier and his wife's kids. Like, I yelled at that kid so many times to put sign and shit, and all you're doing is leaving a paper trail, you know, for people to follow and catch you. And once they do catch it, they know all the shit that you did because you put your name on it. So, better put your, better put your name on it. Um, it really lost its power to scare. Um, people used to be scared of um, Today, not so much. Um, a lot of that was wasted, thrown away during Occupy, um, because of just the shit that went on. Like, there was a lot of really dumb shit that went on, and that was both internal like, and external that people saw. Um, now we're focused on save the whales, not cat gigs, gigs, etc. Um, it's also turned into a social bet to where it's gotten so big with the idea of, as the gentleman in the back there was saying earlier, of giving people hope that you see a lot of younger people and a lot of non-tech users now in the bottom to where all they can do is retweet or tweet. They have no technical skill. They're not hackers. They're not going to break into anything. Um, but they're still there. Um, I don't want to escape these bitches. You know, I have to tell you, the, uh, this is a, we are an example that even a tweet has some power. It does. Because we did lose a venue. Uh, and that was principally. But they actually made a phone call. And phone calls. Yeah, no, it wasn't only right. They, they actually implemented. But even people that are just thinking they can just you know do something on Twitter and that's going to be enough. But there's enough of a volume. Uh, yeah, this yeah. hotel. This hotel was monitoring. Jeff, can you give us a couple of sentences about that, why you lost the Soho house? Well, what they were afraid of? So yeah, so Soho House is a, it's a private, it's basically a private club. They only give us one room, you know, for public, that's only available to public. Everything else is members only. So they had a problem because they didn't want their members or their guests of their members or their hotel guests uh, to have to be inconvenienced entering and exiting the hotel. So, so they asked us to hire security um, to have check in outside the club to just make sure that we were, but also we had to sort of not ask anybody who was a member of guest or a member of a hotel guest to check in. So there was a lot of rules that they put in place. I agreed to everything. Um, but because of the Twitter storm and, uh, and the phone calls, they did get like between 50 and 100 calls. I freaked them out. And then, uh, and even then, they were still okay until about you know less 15 hours before the event started, and then that's when I got the call that they they decided to move on. So uh, so even and even you know a, a, even a just a dumb tweet if there's enough of them and if they mention the name of the business, it has an effect. It does, but how many protesters are actually outside right now? Yeah, okay. it's not true. Fuck yeah, I guess we're watching. <laughs> I think uh, uh, they're coming here instead of the Soho House. Well, the, the well, people from I mean, obviously, I, I don't I encourage this. I love this presentation, and this was the whole point when I started Susan Speaks was to get people that disagree to co to, to discuss their disagreements or to to have a safe conversation without fear of getting banned. Getting yeah. So, uh, so I love this, but uh, but I also knew that you know that we would have once we made the change of announcement that there were, that the amount of us, the people behind the protest would know because clearly there are people that have paid tickets to come here uh, uh, that would share that news. And so the moment that I sent out an email saying have changed venue, uh, somebody I'm, not, I'm using the anonymous name and posted it, you know, which is fine. That's all. <laughs> so, scamming money, um, you have more than one person, more than 10 people uh, that are constantly begging for money on the internet. Um, it turns a lot of people off, um, especially when you have things like my cat game escapes. Um, there's really no game anymore. So, new story time, which is the point that uh, Flannel's going to type over. Yep. So, I, I just want to make sure you only have five minutes sure. left. Okay. Right? So I'm not, if you want to spend it on, you know, something you can. If you want to uh, use your five minutes anyway, you like, because uh, he is going to be here later today. If I was hoping he'd be here to kind of rebut some of this. Uh, I, he's he's uh, welcome to come. I don't know. You know, he did call me and say he, he 
he's going to be here around now. So, um, but he'll have an opportunity. So it's up to you how you use your time. All right, so last slide anyways. Um, said who's arrested to me as much as he think it did in the overall picture of anonymous um, and believe it. Um, he's a mediocre hacker at best. Most of the stuff that was attributed to him and Polsek was actually other people doing the work. Um, people handing him zero days that you would then pass off to somebody else. Um, he's not a security expert. Um, what he does is prey on kids to do the work. Um, he doesn't zero day at all. Like, he doesn't do it in disassembly. Uh, he doesn't do it. Uh, he, he definitely is a pedophile for the uh, chat box with Kayla, um, who at that point he thought was a 15 year old girl. And so, if you want to read those chat logs, I uh, can. So, maybe at some point, make those available as well um, of him having some really dirty talk with someone he thought was a 15 year old girl, um, which I guess is a pedophile. Uh, but Kayla has, uh, Kayla, which is Ryan uh, of the Lulsec group, has spoken out about this on his own. And has admitted to it, and has brought forth the logs to show. Um, so it's not just people who are in the IRC channel claiming it. It is also him sending forward. Yeah. Um, he bullied people into staying into the whole seg, like uh, Mufasa, other folks. Um, he didn't put in the work. Pretty much just ran his mouth, and really the ops went on until the stone docks could drop. Um, and that's the point when Anonymous really kind of shut itself down on the actual working ops, and it has turned into what you see today. Uh, I have two quick uh, stories for about Sabu. Uh, one I was personally involved with. It was during uh, it was part of the South American groups, uh, which I hung out with. I knew them because I played video games with them. It wasn't because I was hacking with them or anything. We were just casual friends who talked on like IRC, but uh, they went by the handles Evil Code and Hobby Todd. Um, <coughs> both are still around, but uh, you can't find them. They're on the same names or anything like that. But what happened was someone had brought forward, um, I don't know, to Sabu or if Sabu had done it himself, but it was during his time as he was a confidential informant. He brought passwords to government Brazilian websites and gave them to Hobby Taja telling him to exploit them, root the servers, and use them for a botnet. Um, Hobby Todd and myself and Evil Kid had talked about this. Uh, the other two were proactively paranoid about everything. Um, so they decided that they were going to do it, but they were starting to suspect that this isn't the normal Sabu. He wouldn't just be going around giving people shells on government websites. So that's kind of the counterpoint to him stopping the 300 cyber attacks or whatever it was that some paper claimed. Uh, this caused over, I think, 2,000 servers, government servers, to be rooted. So that's kind of a counterpoint to what the media was pushing. Uh, and another one was Sebu trying to get certain people to become uh, operators on IRC and also to merge IRC channels. Uh, this is during his time as a CI as well. Possibly to gain more insights or feds wanting more information about where people are talking. Uh, I was told not to use handles or anything about who he was talking with, but he was definitely trying to do more, I think, personally, than he puts forth now to help. He wasn't just going on about his everyday life. But I'm more than happy to hear his side of the story. I assume you guys will be here yeah. uh, for that. Okay. So Which he can, we can talk about this before and if he wants to answer any questions in front of you guys that we said, fine we'll get, that. We'll get the same amount of time you guys have. Yeah. And you guys can ask, just like, if he could have been here to ask questions if he wanted to. You know, that's not his choice. So maybe it's your choice, obviously, to, to be here later. So, but could you just back up? Uh, you, you, what cause? What are you saying that Sabu was distributing shell code that was used to root government servers? Well, he was giving basically shell on the servers. They had already he had already had the password, and he was giving it to Hobby Todd to be okay. So you're, you're I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. We're connecting the dots that the feds 
had access to this, these servers, go okay. with him through, and then go and give it to your anonymous friend. I'm not sure it was the feds. It may have been another hacker who said it. So okay. look, I just, wanted to, collect, I just yeah. wanted to hear what you were saying. Okay. It could have been someone else saying, here's Sabu, and him, and him, or maybe the feds pointing and saying, oh, give that to this person so we can information. They might have had access after it was given to Sabu so they can monitor it. So what you're saying is he had a route somehow, it was given it to him by somebody? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure who. Okay. I'd be more than happy to hear his part. Sure. I'm sure you will. Thanks, guys. Yeah.